Thanks for joining us again. As we saw in the last video, we had a problem that would not factor. And here's the thing, in all of the problems that we've had that were quadratic, we were able to factor those. But now, we run into issues where we can't factor those. And it opens up the door for solving equations that before we couldn't solve. And here's what the square root property says. It just basically it says this. If x squared is equal to a, then your solutions represented by x will be plus or minus the square root of a. Okay? This is called the square root property, and you will see me abbreviate this as SRP. This square root property is the foundation for this whole chapter. Without it, we get nothing. So let me go back to the problems that we looked at in the last video. When I had x squared is equal to 16, notice I've got the square by itself, and it matches up directly with how I have the square root property laid out. Do you all agree? Mm -hmm. So according to the square root property then, that means that x would equal plus or minus the square root of 16. That's what my square root property says right here, right? Now, would you leave the square root of 16 just like this? Uh -uh. No. You're better than that, and you'll say that x equals what? Plus or minus 4. Plus or minus 4, right? Oh, there you go. Oh. Can I get a no snap? What did I get the last time I did this? Same thing. I got the same thing, right? Please understand that when I use this symbol right here, we're going to read this as plus or minus. What it does is that it condenses our two solutions into one. So basically what we have here is that x equals 4, positive 4, or x equals negative 4. But instead of writing two different answers like this, I can write it like this, x equals plus or minus 4. What do you think? I think Dylan's mind is blown, so. Um, Sorry. <laughs> he is either just totally amazed or he was thinking about what fun this weekend is going to hold for him. I was thinking about this girl in my last class who's crying over the research paper. And we are recording this right now, so let's do another <laughs> example. X squared <laughs> equals 18. You say, Mr. Craig, wait, this doesn't factor. And to that I say, so what? If it doesn't factor, that's okay because this t today and all of next week is going to be about how do we take care of equations that don't factor? How do I solve those? And if you get this stuff now, when you're in college algebra, you don't have to worry about it and you're going to already know it. So if I've got this guy and I apply my square root property, then what would my next line be? X equals plus X or minus square root, minus square root of 18. Yes, X equals plus or minus the square root of 18. So there are solutions here. They're just not as pretty as we would like for them to be, right? I mean, plus or minus 4, that's pretty. <laughs> now, can I leave this? No. Amy, you're shaking your head no. ¿Y por qué no? I can factor this guy as 2 times 9. That's a useful way of factoring because 9 is a perfect square. So it means x equals, how am I going to write that? Three plus or minus 3 square roots of 2. Now is it plus or minus 3 square roots of 2 or is it 3 plus or minus mm -hmm. square root of 2? Plus or minus 3. You're the teacher. <laughs> what? It's plus or minus 3 square roots of 2, right? Right. If I did this, the square root of 18 is 3 square roots of 2, right? Mm -hmm. You even had that question on a quiz. So if I have a plus or minus in front of that, then it's going to be plus or minus 3 square roots of 2. Why, why, why are you... I don't understand. I know what you did, but, but I'm saying, like, why How did I simplify that? No, why, why are we emphasizing the plus and minus thing? Because I have two answers here, right? This equation has a square. I expect two answers. If I don't have the plus or minus, I only get one answer. 
Oh. That means you're missing something. Okay. Right? Good. All right. And here's the thing. I'm glad you mentioned that because if you don't have the plus or minus, you're missing half your answers, right? Yes. That's going to be wrong. And guess how many points you're going to be missing? Half. You will miss half your points. I guarantee you that right now. You may have the right three squares of two. If you're missing that plus or minus, you're missing half your answers. You're missing half your points. I don't play around with that. You have to put like plus. Do it again. Don't do what? No, no, you, you, you can do, you can write okay. this. That is perfectly fine. Okay. Sometimes you may see this depending on how you, um, you know, what book you look at. Okay. Yeah. You may see that your answers are written in what's called set builder notation like this. And when you use that curly bracket, it's, it's a set. So you list each solution. So if I did that, I would have three square roots of two. And my other solution is negative three square roots of two. And I end that with a, with a curly bracket like that. Hmm. Now, for me, we can just do this. If you do things in my math lab or interactmath.com, you have to list your solutions separated by a comma. That's what it would say. Now, when you do that, make sure that your comma doesn't, isn't still inside that radical. I've seen that happen. I know if you're writing it by hand, you, know, I wouldn't, you wouldn't put the comma inside there. But with notation on a computer, sometimes it gets kind of gets kind of messy. And I do mention this because if you guys take me for college algebra, you're going to be doing my math lab and you'll have to do your answers like that. Wait till the top one, can we also leave it a plus or minus four? Yeah, no, this, yeah, no, you can do it like this. What I was trying to show you is that you can write as two different answers or leave it condensed. There will be times later when leaving it as plus or minus is unacceptable because there's more simplifying to do. But right now and today, okay. we're there's not going to be anything else you, you can do. How long is your algebra course? Like how many? It's three hours a day. For how long? Three weeks. It's not too long. So if you're watching this video after June 3rd, uh, don't take my college algebra class because it doesn't <laughs> apply. X squared equals negative 48. <coughs> I thought I could go nice, and I said forget it. You guys are better than that. I've got my square by itself, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do I get rid of that square? Think about this. What's the opposite of squaring something? Square root. Square root. So what a lot of students will do, and sometimes you'll do this. OK, so this is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 48, right? Isn't that what we've been doing? Yeah. Some students will want to do this. I want to take the square root of both sides. Can I do that? And what is my answer? It, it should be the same thing, but I've got to caution you here. When you apply the square root property and you do the square root on both sides, <coughs> you've got to remember the plus or minus. The square root property, as we saw at the top of this page, has the plus or minus there. Again, you drop the plus or minus, you're dropping half your answers, you lose half your points. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Yes. So now, you're, this first step right here, that's this section. Everything else that I'm doing is what we did in the last section. It's our last chapter, simplifying radicals. So this is equal to plus or minus. How do I break down 48 in a useful way? 6 and 8. How is that useful? I want perfect squares. Okay, never mind. I was thinking 6 squares, but it's not. Nope. Kidding. What's a good way to break down 48? Where it said six and eight, but we don't get a perfect square from that. Here's what you can do. If I look at this as two and twenty-four, and then two and twelve, two and six, and then two and three, these that's my prime factorization, right? I've got one pair of twos, I have another pair of twos, so what is that going to give me on the outside? A two times a two is a four. Is there anything else that comes out? Wait a minute, though. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do with this guy right here? Oh, you going to dump him on the side of the street? <laughs> what does that give you? That gives you an I, and then who's left inside the radical? Oh, what are you doing, the three's left inside, right? So we don't want to put the I in the radical, right? 
the eye is not in the radical. The square root of a negative gives you an eye on the outside, not on the inside. Because if you left it on the inside, that's like you saying that negative 1 equals i, but it doesn't. So do you all agree? Now, here's the thing about 48. In case you guys forgot about 48, you also could have looked at this guy as 16 times 3. Mm -hmm. And of course, the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of the negative gives you the i. And who's the guy left inside the radical who can't come out? 3. The 3. 